Hello and welcome to Mzansua Peck again. It is that time of the night where we have to tell you about what happened in that court. That kangaroo court, we call it a kangaroo. It's a kangaroo court, obviously. We are trying to find what happened to Senzo Meiwa. But I can tell you right now, for now, we are just looking for a key in a dark room. And uh, as in Dao, there is no direction, there is no whatsoever. As in Dao. Because some of the things that are presented there, they might actually make you think that hey, you are going in the right direction. Only a person who's saying, saying a normal person would not accept the theories that are put there. And uh, we will obviously demonstrate how we do not approve of those theories that are there. Hence, we are saying justice for Senzo is probably very far as yet until we reach to that point where we feel like, yeah, that is what we are looking for. Mm, we're still going to be just doing things the way we are. Obviously, we are following the case with them. Yes. We are pretending to be in the dark the same way they are. But in our minds, I don't think we are in a dark. And any person from um, this channel and other places, a person who just can think and, and look at things in a different way, can actually be able to see that icon. Greetings to everyone. Please like the video, share the video, and comments. As usual, be a subscriber. And we still need members. If you are not a member, please re do become a member. And I saw one disturbing comment that says that we are forcing people to become members. No, we don't force people to become members. Mm -mm. Hence, we have been uploaded on the member site for a while. But that is probably going to stop eventually um, once we get the energy yes. to do double dose. So, Emily, what do you say? I say let's go for it. Let's go for it. Then. Let's go for it. Uh, I remember the time when uh, Rata was still new on the case, Judge Rata Mkwateng, and he was telling the defense that uh, they are not uh, taking the accused out of the scene in their cross-examination or not. And we kind of agreed with him to say that they should place... They are accused or take them away from the scene, according mm. to their versions, mm. right? Yeah. And today is where I wished he could say something. And he didn't. To say that we hear that you have called this expert witness with regards to Accused number one, proving that uh, he was, in fact, in Fosloras before... Um, during the incident or during the time period of the incident, which is 2014, but um, it's still not placing them at the scene. So what we are doing here, we are building now from the so-called confessions. Yeah. And we are building now a, a new case. Yeah. Of saying that because of one, two, three, they have, we are investigating and as for quoting what was said in cross-examination by Ramos Sebeli, and then you use that to bring another witness that even does not help you place the accused at the scene. What time wasting uh, <laughs> moving at the snail's pace uh, what do we call this? What do we call this? It's called evidence, according to Rata. Oh, my God. <sighs> Mr. Black Lawyers, Today was a very how are long they? Day. Today was a very long day, but let me unpack it with you guys. Thank you for joining Mzansi Reality. Okay, we unpack the Senzo Meiwa trial for now. It's our current thing. So, welcome if you're new to the channel. Judge Ratham Khwateng apologized and withdrew the comments that he made about black lawyers in court on Wednesday. 
after the defense lawyer Tulani Mgomezulu failed to pitch in court that day. Mkwateng said, is this how lawyers, black lawyers, I saw some people coming and saying, oh, but you left out that part where he said, um, sorry, some lawyers. The damage is already done. The damage is already done. Uttering black lawyers first, it, it just concluded everything that we needed. Everything was said right there, and that's why he's under fire, and that's why he had to apologize, you see. People who do that are part of the problem. Mm, apologist. Yeah. Yeah, we have apologists in They're this part of the problem. They're part of the we reason have why we are still struggling. They, they just make the struggle even longer. You know when you are a person of color and looking for justice for your people, someone said you do not only fight the system and the people of this color, you also fight your own people. Mm. And how true that is. That is so true. When you, when you look at some of people's thought processes and how they decide to excuse inappropriate behavior or I- intolerable things, they try to push them and make them look right mm. or try to be objective in an, an, an objective situation. In a sense, before a person apologizes, already the person has made an excuse for that person to not apologize. You're part of the problem. People who left that comment, you're part of the problem. We need to sort that. Look at yourself. Look inside and have a conversation with yourself. <coughs> so they said we should tell the truth about how black lawyers behave, some of them. Mukhwatling says that his comments were ill-advised. And the state called the next witness who will testify about computer-generated extracts from Nazi system to refute the version of accused number one, Moses Bia. But before all of that happens... Isn't it ironic, though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, have they launched that complaint? The Black Lawyers Association. Or they were going to do that? I feel like they were going to do it. It wasn't official yet because... So the judge is answering the media now, the rumors. Yeah. The man who does not watch, who does not care about, um, what do we call media. it? The media. The kangaroo court. The kangaroo court is not, is not entertaining that. He's, he's answering to what happens in the media platform. Hey, I doubt. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> so before all of that could happen, the next witness coming to testify, Baloy asked the judge if they'll revisit the issues that cropped up on Wednesday. So the judge apologized about his comments and utterances arising from the conduct of his trial. He said, and subsequently, because of the news flashes, I came to know that the Black Lawyers Association apparently saying that it wants to arrange a meeting with me or it wants to meet me. I don't have a problem with that, but the law precludes me from meeting the black lawyers because they want to have a meeting with me regarding my presiding in a case which is continuing, and they're not parties to that case. The parties to the case are the five gentlemen here and who are represented by the five councils and attorneys and state represented by Mr. Sibanda and Mr. Baloui. So was that referred to? Was he referring to them? I don't know. Because he said, said black lawyers. lawyers. That is anything. Included, uh, and Mr. That is Malone beside the, the case. I mean, this man. He said, I'm sure we all know that a judge is supposed to execute their functions without fear, favor, and prejudice. By the way, he was reading. This was all written down and he was reading. And that he's got to be independent, objective in the exercise of his authority in court. Consequently, judicial protocol and the law itself does not allow a judge during the presiding of a case which is continuing and has not yet finalized to meet with a body or person and having discussions 
on any matter whatsoever which arises from the conduct of the case. Yeah. The law does not permit that actually. If I did, I'd be accused before court. They could bring an application. I mean, they're accused before court. They bring an application for my recusal because they wouldn't be present in that meeting with the Black Lawyers Association that they want to have with me. I don't think the accused would have a problem. I feel like the people who will have a problem is, of course, the state, in my opinion. You understand? Maybe they will feel like you were be, you are going to be swayed in the other direction. I don't see the, the accused having a problem with him meeting the Black Lawyers Association. And the fact that you you don't even have to ask them <laughs> you just have to to make that assumption. <laughs> he said they could even apply for the quashing of proceedings on the basis that they are unconstitutional for me having entertained a discussion with the legal fraternity body. So that is the reason. Ah, but that is where the actual apology starts. Let's listen to it. But me, on reflection and after some thoughts, I admit that my comments could be interpreted as intemperate, ill-advised, ill-considered, and offensive. It actually showed his intolerance of Mr. Mkomezulu, in my opinion. Mm. In my opinion. It did? It, it meant you are not patient with... Mgomezulu. Mgomezulu no. uh, irritates you. That, that's what it demonstrated to us who follow the case and analyze it on a daily basis. And if that is the perception of the accused, if you apology in a if Ah, it's done. That's no longer an apology. That's an, an apology excuse. If I don't take that apology seriously. It's it's just protocol. It's just just to do it for the masses. For um seeing the utul. It's just for that. Just for just for due cause. It's not an apology you should take and be like, oh he apologized though. It, it's protocol. And he said that if that is the perception of the accused and the representatives and persons outside, even the public and the BLA, the Black Lawyers Association, then I want to state that I unreservedly, without any conditions, without any conditions, withdraw the comments which I made in that Wednesday afternoon because of the events that played on here. And also, if I caused, if I caused an offense to any person or organization. Mm. I also unreservedly apologize, and I also apologize to the judge president of this division, Mr. Mlambo, and the DJP. That sounded genuine. You ran, I love this part sounded See, genuine. when you're apologizing to the <laughs> colleagues and what, it sounded genuine. It sounded genuine. You even looked up. <laughs> he stopped reading. He mm. looked like up. Like you are portraying the message to the people you're apologizing to. Yes, yes. And uh, the DJB of division, Mr. Obrile Dwaba, and if needs be, also the Chief Justice, the Judiciary, my colleagues, and even the Judicial Service Commission. And as an aside, um, the irony is that the Black Lawyers Association himself with the late Gofri P. Jedi Khang Moseneke, Sain Mushidi, Makambeni from Pretoria, Olivilagazi, he said they were about 10 when they conceptualized the Black Lawyers Association in 1977, 50 years ago, when the spirit of black consciousness was prevailing the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, when I heard this, I had to laugh. <laughs> I had to laugh. I'm like, like okay, so I now... I apologize, but I created the concept of a BLA. <laughs> yeah, just take that into consideration. Wow. 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 What, what an egotistical show-off. And on top of that... 
it's even more embarrassing that you formulated this black lawyers association and you were in and the committee and you come back to undermine the very same lawyers that you have convinced yourself that proving you those who did time. not want it correct that's basically what you're doing those who would disagree with the so called association they are proud of what you've just what you said mm. Mm. Or he's just calling the Black Lawyers Association to order to say that you don't have a right to tell me what to do because I started this thing that you are now using to come at me or whatever. Perhaps that's another sign to just say, shush, leave me alone. He said that they formed the Black Lawyers <laughs> Association. And here he is today, 50 years later, showing resentment towards black lawyers. He said, I can brag a bit and say I was in the steering committee. I and Museneke drafted the constitution. So I have been a member. He, he had a slip of a tongue. He said, black consciousness, and he quickly brought himself together and said, Black Lawyers Association in <laughs> 1977. And I was like, black consciousness. You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somehow, I feel like this black consciousness at the time, it was trendy. It was a cool thing to be a part of. That's the impression I got from him. It wasn't coming from his heart. It wasn't coming to say, you know what, I, 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 I was passionate. You look at the passion of somebody who's passionate about what they are doing and saying speak. They don't even have to read from somewhere. Maybe at the time in 1977, it was trendy to be affiliated with the blank consciousness. But I don't think... 50 years later, it is anymore. Do you understand? Uh, uh, I feel like at the time, it was a fashion thing, and he hopped on it real quick. It was a trend that he jumped on. I wonder how old this man is. Is he 80 or 100? I don't know. Maybe he's 80. Because <laughs> he's in his, I think, 80. Late because 70s, he played not soccer. He, he, I think late 70s. I'm not sure how old he is. But so what? He started doing this thing. That's the thing. He played soccer. He played soccer. There's history in soccer. Yes. Then and he left soccer to And he go left and soccer study. to go and Law. study. Yes. And then he's telling us 50 years back, 50 something years back. He was there. <laughs> so the Black Lawyers Association is free to write to the judge president and discuss the matter. But as far as I'm concerned, that is the end of the matter. Well, Mgomezulu had written a letter to apologize, and he asked Mgomezulu if he can read that letter, and Mgomezulu agreed. So he started off by saying oh, the date was the 20th of March, which I think is the very same day mm. um, the incident took place, which was, and it, he emailed him at 21 minutes past four. Mm. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it said, Good day, Judge Mohwatling. I write this email to express my apology for my non-appearance in court. I had discussions with my colleagues last Friday whereby I asked Advocate Munyegi to stand in for me for testimonies of Ms. Mushaping and the photographer. The request was adhered to by Ms. Advocate Munyegi and on Monday I asked Mr. Ramosipili to stand in for me and he agreed in the presence of other counsels. Hmm. Mm. I received but instructions. I, but I, I had a feeling. Hmm. I, I had a feeling. Hmm. And uh, Minyeki was not in court, by the way. Maybe that's why the whole thing planned out, how it happened. Oh, yeah, he, he was not, he was in, not court. in court. Yeah, yeah, the day when the, of the incident. Yes, yes he was Ramo not. Sibili was, and it's quite interesting that he's saying that Ramosipili had agreed. It's very interesting. So, c can you imagine the situation where you first uh, talk to uh, I'm sure an obvious who's, who, who came with me? Mm. Probably, I mean, I think me, it, it's Mshololo, and then um, yeah. any any decision 
taken by uh, if Mshololo has to say go stand for that person I'm sure that's how it is it looks like Mshololo is a boss yes so and then you are requested with that, that regards and then you find out in the morning that is it a morning mm-hmm. that hey, that person is not here mm. and then you quickly say can you pass the message to so and so as you are trying to get hold of that person and you are struggling Mm. as we said yesterday mm. I, i i had a feeling that he was uh, struggling to get a hold of ramasipile i'm not uh, close to the situation but you could tell i mean it would be reckless from gomezulu not to talk to ramasipile i don't think he would do that in my opinion but it's quite clear that he tried and it was quite strange because It, in my theory i thought maybe he needed to start with ramasipili before going to mshololo right but he said i received instructions on an agent basis wherein 74 motor vehicles were impounded and repossessed by the company called bike automatic automobile pty limited he said i took this opportunity because i was not receiving fees for the past five months and legal aid south africa declined to pay i need to close the unpaid school fees for my daughter and my two sons and my house bond today at uh, 15 minutes past 4 i called mr baloi he did not answer my call but due to his professionalism he returned my call and we had a discussion however before advocate baloi returned my call i called ramasipili and sent him a whatsapp message but he did not respond furthermore i called advocate mshololo who also did not answer my call but showed professionalism by returning my call at 9:30 that's a jab what did ramsipiri not uh, return his call and his whatsapp message how could he ramsipiri hey allegedly allegedly He says I then asked her to speak to Ms. Silipe whom I conveyed the message for the judge. I attempted to call the secretary Ms. Rose Silipe and I left a message. I do not have anything against your leadership since I have known you from Clanston House. I was on the fourth floor with Norman Masana Abo the late. I did not receive the transcripts of the main trial and I do I have not consulted with accused number 1. I ran a trial within a trial without going through the evidence of the main trial and I'm proceeding with the main trial only with 63610 of 2014. I have noticed that other counsels are offered assistance and they are engaged somewhere else but different situation in my case. please find room to accept my apology i do not have any vendetta against your lordship regards to lanim gomezul what a beautiful a uh, letter now he doesn't have anything against you judge ratham khwatle nothing none detected no lie detected was detected there all is clear no personal vendetta with you once it is just person. work you know work we are working yes and 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 good for him that he found a gig that pays mm. i was worried that he was attending that gbv case but it looks like agfan remember he was he had to prioritize and obviously under the circumstances of not getting paid by legal aid while he's been attending court five months straight without getting paid then he had to attend to matters that will that will do that mm. we are not fighting here Mm-mm. it's work i'm saying it's a job 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 i need to do my job and i need to be seen doing my job exactly that's exactly. it exactly so the next witness chupie matlo who works for the road traffic management did you expect that guys Yes, we did expect a police because all, all that we are doing we are having police but not this one of the traffic. Of the traffic. Hi. Hi Svelelwe. Hi Svelelwe. Yo. Ah. 
Yabana lento le. Mao bulandela le case le. You will have you will have conflicting conflicting thoughts whenever you are interacting with the police. You you, you are like you must watch we're, your back. We're, we're dealing with police. At yes. this rate, even the commissioner watch might come and talk. testify. Even the commissioner might as well come and testify. That's what it has turned into. Mm. It's a police case. It's accused versus the police. Yeah, that's just what it is, basically. And Chupe Christopher Matlo, um, the state prosecutor advocate George Baloy said that Matlo is an expert in the INATI system. He has access to the NATI system, the National Traffic Information System, and contains the particulars of registered owners of motor vehicles. It gives their contact details. It also gives their addresses. But he said this witness, he started trying to give us a long speech, a long introduction, talk about, eh, which is something we haven't experienced before. Basically, and I'm trying to get an introduction from the prosecutor about what the witness was going to testify on. He said that this witness is going to testify about the extracts from the Nazi system. The sole purpose of presenting this evidence is to refute the evidence of accused number one. This witness is going to testify that and show those extracts of the application that was made by accused number one for a Lena license. And this information was then captured on the Nazi system. And this is to refute the following version of accused number one during the evidence of mr zungu on the 8th of september 2023 everything is centered but he said the following was put by mr eramusebeli he said and i quote accused number one will state that in 2013 until march uh, 2013 he was staying in Fosloras hostel at Basu 20 section but when he lost employment in March 2013 he returned home and stayed home until he returned again to stay with his uncle in Tembisa in 2015. Mr. Ramosipili then asked Mr. Zungu to comment then Zungu said the following I would not know where he was working when he lost his employment we have never discussed that. Now the following is very important, said Mr. Baloi. Mr. Ramosipili says the following. The basis of that proposition to you is essentially this, that since March 2013, he has never returned to Johannesburg or Gauteng until 2015. Now that is the nub of the matter. The state will then present evidence via this witness that shows that accused number one did apply for a Lena license in person at Brackban Drivers License Testing Center, DLTC, on the 17th of July, 2014. Does that mean he was staying in Joburg? I mean, I could be visiting a friend... Um, staying with a friend because staying is a different in my opinion you must have stayed for certain months or so mm -hmm. so <coughs> if I go, I go to KZN now and book in KZN okay and I didn't say I stay in KZN or I stay in Cape Town mm -hmm. just because I was I was doing my lessons there. Now, does it mean that I stay there? No. No. I went there to write a test. And uh, for a couple of days, I came back. That didn't seem like something that I, I mean, I thought it was going to be that important that at some point I came back uh, to write a test and that's it. Hmm. I don't know what to make of this evidence. Like, really, like, how does it help with placing the accused at the Spaza house, in my opinion? Just a question. Oh, I guess the judge only, the, <coughs> or only is, the, the judge is looking for, were they there? Were, were, I mean, 
at some point were they in Joburg uh, uh, around 2014 if that is the case guilty as charge but let's continue let's continue deliberating so on the 17th of july 2014 then he undertook the learner's test on the 22nd of july 2014 but he unfortunately could not make it on the 22nd of july 2014 he made another appointment at boxback license testing center he then secured an appointment for the 15th of september 2014 to sit for the lena license on the 15th of september 2014 he then passed his lenas mgomez will stood to ask if he is not sure if the state is leading evidence the judge said that the evidence will be led now Balo was trying to tell the court what he intends on leading this witness upon. Now that I revisited, guys, he was actually leading evidence. He was. He was. Then Balo said, when you apply for a license, there's a certain questionnaire that the applicant must complete regarding the health status. There's also infringement notices that were issued to some of the accused. Purpose of that is to show that the accused were stopped when they were driving a particular motor vehicle by a traffic officer. Ramosipili stood to raise the same objection Mr. Mgomizulu was raising. And Balo said, I foresee that there will be an objection. I'm just trying to explain the reason why just so everybody can follow the evidence. This is not giving evidence. I'm just outlining the evidence so that everybody can follow it. Well, you were giving evidence. You even gave us the data. That now that I've gone through the testimony of the witness and I have to revisit what you said in the morning, you definitely were giving evidence. Come on. I'm not a lawyer, but that's exactly what you were doing. You were speaking on what is already in the affidavit that the witness was supposed to testify on. I don't know whether you were trying to imprint it or trying to, so hard to convince the court, maybe. I, I don't no, know. There's nothing repetition, to convince the court with Repetition you. is what? Repetition is programming. Repetition is... Mm. The more you hear something, you are hoping the truer it becomes. That's that's what advertising does. I can re- you, you repeat something. You you play it over and over and over and over until it becomes a part of you. Maybe this was the attempt, in my opinion, because honestly speaking, this witness was the most useless, uh, in my opinion. We we are not at the meet yet. We are nowhere near the meet. We are still at the at the at the faraway place. We are not close. We are not even getting closer. We are very cold. We, we are freezing. We are freezing at this point. Ramasipili said that the submission that Balui was giving came from the affidavit of the witness. The witness will testify on it. He said that he read the affidavit. Uh, the judge says, so what is the problem? I thought you didn't know what this witness was going to say. You know what this witness is going to say? And Ramasipili said he knows. But Loi said, as far as these computer-generated printouts are concerned, the state will be relying on the act <coughs> that governs the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act 25 for 2002. There's also a case of Ndrovu versus Minister of Correctional Services. Nisi said that Mr. Baloi, what he's doing is totally wrong. All he needs to do is to lead the witness so that even if there is an objection, then he can respond. It's unnecessary for him to even be before the wit- this witness begins to testify to profane his testimony to refer this court to a particular authority that will only come if and when there is an objection with regard to the testimony of this witness. Otherwise, the appearance of this witness will be rendered very nugatory. Guys, I have no idea what that word means, but it sounded <laughs> nugatory. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to say null and void or baseless. I guess it's there. The, the word is there. <laughs> just that you don't know it. I don't know what the word means, but I, I like it. <laughs> you know the English of lawyers. <laughs> 
So if Mr. Baloy persists on this line, then the judge said it's not evidence and advised Baloy to lead the witness. Baloy insisted to make another point. He said in terms of section 150, at the beginning of evidence, the state can lay out the basis of the case during the presentation of the evidence of any witnesses. Nothing stops them from doing that. The judge asked him to read that section 150 and Ramasipili also had to read it after Baloy read it. So it was read twice and said with his understanding, he read it and it said the prosecutor made any trial before any evidence is adduced, address the court for purposes of explaining the charge and indicating without comment to the court what evidence intends uh, adducing in support of the charge without commenting. That is what I'm underlining, my Lord. He said, without commenting that part that was important to Ramasepeli. And also, this is done at the commencement of the trial, not when a witness is before court. Baloy said that he was done. He was just showing the relevance. Exactly. Why, why, what, why, why, what is the reason? Right? And why does it feel like the judge is still going to let Baloy get away with all of these tricks just before in front of us? Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's so cringy to watch. It, it's cringe, in, in my opinion. Matlo uh, disposed two affidavits. One of them is 22 pages, and it was done on the 9th of October, 2023. So the case was still ongoing and the pretrial conference had already taken place. There is a part where the judge was asking whether they've had a pretrial conference or what. There's a section 212 of the Criminal Procedure Act and Mumalo stood to object. Baloy said that if his learned friend can just give him time to finish. Now, there's a reason why Ngumalo got up, you know. Na, 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 na. Can, when you object, you're supposed to be stopped to let the, the person that you're objecting to finish talking. How does this objection work at the court? It's not an assumption that uh, if he listened to the full version that he wanted to put, he was going to then be answered. Then and maybe then retract the objection. Uh, there would be no need for objection. The judge was even laughing. I, I found that disrespectful in my Ah, this man laughs every time the defense speaks. <laughs> it's like he was laughing that Mumalo was made to sit down by Advocate Baloy. Let me finish. No, I'm objecting. But Ngumalo said that he has a problem because when his colleague addressed the court, he was referring to accused number one, hence the evidence of this witness also relates to his client. He objects the evidence that is going you know, to be No, the judge is actually laughing that, according to him, if you ask me, it feels like this evidence is solid. Oh, that's why he, he's just letting it slide in. Like yeah. He did with he, the confessions. He, 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 that's, that's why he's laughing for me. That's my opinion. He, 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 he's making it sound solid or puts a weight in it. That it has something mm. <laughs> solid. Mm. Hi, I would love to be in the Dululu land that they are in. Because <laughs> being on the other side, guys, I don't want to lie. It's emotionally taxing. It's tiring. It, it, it feels like you are fighting a losing battle. And you are fighting and you shouldn't even be in that fight. You have, have you ever been in a fight where you are losing, but it's not even your fight? That's what it feels like. And he objected to the evidence that was going to be tendered by this witness in respect of his client. And he said that it's irrelevant. It does not address the core issues in this case. Right? Right? This objection from Ngumalo, it was correct in my opinion. Because the core, issue, the core issue is that the accused need to be placed at the 
Spaza House. Not the driving center, not the learner's testing center of the driving, not the driving license Allegedly. department at the Kruka's door. Allegedly, before Allegedly. You, 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 you waste your air, uh, you cannot detect on how the prosecutor decide to lead his evidence. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. I'm like... Yane. So hence, he said, we are dealing with the matter in relation to five counts as per the indictment. Mnisi also said that Mr. Baloy said that the testimony of the witness will only have an effect on accused number one. And Baloy said he was interrupted when he was trying to explain the relevance of the evidence. Now they're saying the relevance has not been shown when they stop me from showing the relevance is what Baloy was saying. So they were supposed to let him give that speech that God only knows how long it was going to last so that he can marinate for this witness before they come and testify. The state said that it deals with all accused and telephonic links made by Colonel Lamberta Stein. So they are linking this driving what what with what Stain was testifying on the was it the cell phone records mm. that he testified on. Mm. So the judge said if the evidence is irrelevant, then counsel through their cross examination will demonstrate that. He means the cross examinations that he also he always interferes with. Yeah, the one that is not go is he's not going to listen to with uh, unbiased oh. um, demeanor or whatever that you may call it. The ones that always feel like he's blocking, in my opinion, allegedly. Let's continue. So Baloy also talked about the Volkswagen Polo that featured in the confessions. And he asked, are you the one who prepared this affidavit? Matlou said, yes. The other affidavit is 27 pages, and it was dated 23rd of September 2023. And he stood to object, and he said, Mr. Baloy, even before this witness starts to testify, he hands in an affidavit. <laughs> I can't get over how Mnisi pronounces affidavit <laughs> that is purported to have been written uh, by this witness. Now a section 212 affidavit simply replaces the oral testimony of this witness. But if the witness is there, then there is no need for that 212 affidavit unless Mr. Balo introduces to the court, even before the testimony of this witness, the documents as annexures that are attached to the affidavit. But the affidavit itself should not have should not be handed over to the court when the witness is here. So the judge asked Baloy, what does 212 say? And Baloy read section 212, subsection 3. He said that there's nothing that stops the affidavit is mere introduction admissible. So this happened with the pathologist. There was no objection when the pathologist read his affidavit on the record. But the pathologist read his affidavit. You did not read his affidavit on his behalf. Nisi then said there is a difference. This witness is not an expert. He's just a mere witness that comes uh, from Inathis. He is not an expert. The state contended that he is an expert on the Inatis system. He's an investigator attached to the RTMC. See, in this court, you can just make someone an expert. Everyone is an expert. Yeah. No, nothing. Nothing proved that this person is an expert, but he's an expert. Everyone is an expert. 
Which contain but it's I boring or read this the thing. section 15 of the Electronic Commission Act on record admissibility and the weight of data messages defined as data generated, sent and received or stored by electronic means. And this included A, voice, where the voice is used by an automated transaction, and B, that one that he says they are relying on, which is a stored record, and 15 subsection 1 in an e- in a legal proceedings, the rules of evidence must not be applied so as to deny the admissibility of a data message in evidence on the mere ground that it is constituted by data message or if it is the best evidence that the person adducing it could reasonably be expected to obtain on the grounds that it is not in its original form. Subsection 2, the information in the form of data messages must be given evidential weight. Well, it went on and on and on, you guys. The rest of it, I could not record it. I just felt like, you know what? Ah. Okay, so basically all of it was dealing with evidence that presented in data form. Okay, but I then went on to say you've indicated that you deposed two affidavits in the matter. Is it correct? And Matlo said that's correct, my lord. But I asked him, I just want to show you your first affidavit consisting of 22 pages. And if I can't draw your attention to page 21 and 22, he confirmed his signature and stamps on it, and it was done on the 29th of October, 2023. Baloy referred him to the next affidavit consisting of 27 pages, and it was commissioned on the 23rd of September. So in my own speculative mind or theory, so this happened after Ramosipili had uh, cross-examined Zungu and said that accused number one was not based in Gauteng around the time period. So someone came with this bright idea that uh, let us dispute that and uh, thought to go check at the licensing department and the licensing department only to prove that accused number one was based in Fosloras or the East Rand around that time. Let me show you. Let me demonstrate how crazy this theory that Balo submitted, uh, that uh, this this man who's coming to testify here uh, was there because of the fact that uh, it was put to um, Zoom or... Yes. I don't Zoom. know. Yes. Yes. That uh, accused was not here in Jobek. Mm. The crazy part of it, though, is that this man says he got the request in 18th of November 2020. Before that cross-examination occurred. No, that is the craziest part of it all. Unless these people could anticipate all that. And then this thing is only submitted, the first one is submitted on the 22nd or 23rd of September 2023. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? That's the first question. (laughs) How long does it take you to do such a report? Well, it took him three years. How difficult must it be? You submitting that you did, you got the request, such a request on the 18th of November 2020. 2020. And only on the 22nd, after we have questioned uh, Zungu and we have put some questions such as this one that this report that is now uh, sort of tailored around the questions that we put that was given to you 2020 <laughs> comes in in, in in our desk <laughs> how long does it take you to finish this thing because it seems as if in this court as you are showing on this system that you can just pull these records. Mm-hmm. Was this all that you were doing this all this is time? all you were required to do or you actually did more than this? What did you do that is more than you just pulling, like you are pulling it? No, you was asked to do, to get more, uh, whatever that you can do. We'll demonstrate it as, as we go, go on. Ha! Yeah. Now it's part of the case, okay? It's part of the case. And uh, accused number one, uh, they're trying to prove that he was based in Gauteng. 
and uh, we are still not placing them at the Spaza House. We are at the licensing department for now. Advocate Charles Mnisi for accused number 32 to place it on record that these affidavits were already commissioned on the 9th of September and the other one commissioned on the 22nd of September 2023 and that they only received the information on Wednesday. He would also love it for the state to put it on record why from September this information was not made available to them. So he objected that this witness should be be proceeded with unless the state brings or should not be proceeded with unless if the state uh, brings out the reasons why this information was not disclosed to them so otherwise this will constitute a trial by ambush a trial that is not fair for the accused persons and the state has been in possession of this document for almost six months so Baloy said that he really does not wish to cast aspersions on his colleagues Last year, before they started with the evidence of the tracker expert, he said he personally came to court and found his colleagues in court consulting, and he gave them the affidavit last year. But check this out. He only gave them one affidavit. And he said that he remembers in particular the one affidavit he said i personally did so i don't want to enter into a debate he said on thursday out of courtesy he again gave them the affidavits mr mnisi said on wednesday um that's when he got the affidavit and the judge asked if sh they should postpone the case Look, the judge is always ready to correct the mistakes that Baloi makes and also, uh, how would I put this? Minimize the damage. For instance, Baloy says he gave them these affidavits. Yes. Uh, in last, time. It, is it last year? He, he's not saying one. He's talking about two. That mm. is that is Baloy's submission. Mm -hmm. But these people, they stand. That this is where the defense. Uh, if I if if I had this book of mine, I would just hit their heads a bit. Ramsey uh, Billy uh, and and you stand up, you say we got it, my lord, and that's what goes in the record that you got it, all of it. You've got you've got two affidavits. Only Nisi doesn't have, ne? And 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 Mumalo stands up and he also says the same thing. No, you you know how this. By now, you should understand how this judge operates. Yeah, ne? So the most important thing that you start with is that you did not get everything. We did not get everything. And then you continue that we only got the one that don't stand up and show us, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. And you know where he got me when he said that? His people... He would like to say without throwing Advocate Nisi and Baloi under the bus. It's a joke, right? It's a joke that you we, we people said you threw Gomezul under the bus. Now you are coming with jabs and you think it's a joke. It's a joke, right? You were supposed to laugh. You stand up, you do the very same thing by just making uh, um, Nisi's submission even less damaging. Because you are saying, ah, I got it. You don't care of the second one, eh? You, 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 it's okay. Yeah, and he said he personally received one last year. Ramosipi, guys. Ramosipi, it's all about being, feeling like he's part of this case. And this case is, is going under his nose, he's, he's moving. By your drowning. He's moving, he's drowning. Look at today, this person was about his submissions. It was about what he asserted to whoever that was in the state. This, this person, all these affidavits that was here, both of them, they were about what you put on that man's... We, yes. we are still waiting for Muzi to, to, to have his two cents. Yes. 
Because that this music can can speak precisely. Yes, it's Ramos Epele who put it to Zungu that uh, accused the uh, Ute that he was in Houte around ah, the Ramos time, Ipili, uh, and now the evidence mm-hmm. that 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 he gave is now. He stands up and says, "I got it, I have it." Whatever happened to just shutting up and and speaking? If you don't know how to and saying to make to draw this judge's uh, attention, then then shut up then. Shut up because it let people who know how to to articulate themselves in terms of what they need, let them be like bombnis. Let them stand and argue with the judge because they don't care when they can say what they want to say. It seems as if when you you worried more about how the judge perceives you. I don't understand what, what why because this judge is retired and this is his last gig. What I would have uh, appreciated if he, is if he said, "We only received one, and today we are being told that there's two. I guess you have a, put it that way. Okay? If you feel like you cannot put it in a way that supports. No, you don't start with we there. received. We don't have. We have one. The second one. We don't have the second. That's how we put it. Mm. Because. Once you say we receive, they just oh, oh sit down. Sit down. You received it. No, we've got one, and he's talking about two affidavits. We only have one. So Ngumalo then said he also received it last year. What smoke do you have for Ngumalo? The same stuff. <laughs> and these guys, both of them, they have this. They are. They are <laughs> you can tell with these guys. I don't know whether they feel honored. That they are standing in front of a man who created BLA. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. That's like both of them, they are honored. Because most of the time when the judge is going up, uh, they withdraw everything. Now okay, they have added more in the in what they, they this withdrawing. I withdraw whatever that I said. Now they, they are assisting. Michelle Lola was not in court. She was represented by Mr. Munyeki. Look at how You see smooth. the hypocrisy. Look at how smooth she She submits that tomorrow we must not stand. We must stand on Monday. We must stand on Monday. And she knew she was not going to be allegedly. Only that she's not going to be available. Mm-mm. She had other places to be. No, it's not a problem. We don't make. have any problem. No, no problem. We at don't all. have any problem with that. But listen to this the case tickets. is probably not paying that much. The silence and the peace. You understand? No one stood no up drama. with her and said, "Hey, this was a private call with Mshololo." In fact, we had a meeting yesterday. What Ramasipili had to do was, I will brief him. Then life can go on. But no, he refused. It's okay. It is right. But what he said after that is is is, is that that I have a problem with. Well, that I was only called Drum Shololo. Mm, I mean, what is wrong with you? Only, why didn't you say it today? I don't know. Why didn't you say today I was only contacted Drum Shololo? Why was it quiet when Mugomezul was at uh, on that letter? Why couldn't you say object objection, my lord? Can I correct? <laughs> well, the judge asked if Mnisi would like for them to postpone for him. And Mnisi said, he put it on the record, I never received them. And the judge asked him how much time he needs. You see, he's correcting it. He knows it's wrong. Inside, he knows it's wrong. But what he's doing now, he's shifting the bed. He's making it seem like Mnisi is the one who's going to delay the case that he mm. says he won on Friday. That's 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 how this judge is. Mm. Even this that apology, it, it, you are saying I must apologize to something I made. Mm. I, is that kind of a person? It seems like it's that kind of a person who reminds you all the time that I made you. Can you imagine if you practice under this man or he was... Uh, 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 the I one remember talking about justice shadowing Maya. you the way he he just casually name dropped justice Maya's name to say oh i taught her I, she was under me I'm like, now can you imagine judge Maya being a chief justice sure sure <laughs> 
Nisi said, let this witness proceed. I will pro- approach the court when the need arises. The judge asked if they had a pre-trial conference, and Baloy said that it was in Palm Ridge where the matter initially appeared. None of this defense counsel was present there. There was a different set of representatives at and, the time. And Emily, maybe we are just hammering on people for wrong reason. Mm-hmm. Now, Nisi has fought his battles. Yes. He managed to put this man on the weight. So he's going to come now on, on Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Since these ones had an affidavit, it's here. I've got it. Why didn't they cross do their cross-examination cross and get it over and done? Why? With? Why are they now climbing in what Nisi was fighting for? Why? I look at could have started and cross examined today. Look at how Gomezulu, when such matters are happening about someone else, is quiet, chilled, unless his name is called. Mm-hmm. Chilled, quiet. He wasn't even asked whether he had it or no, 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 no. He was not asked. He was not asked. It was like he just kept quiet. He went along. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can they learn to do that, perhaps? Even in Nis, Nis, I've noticed in Nis a lot of time. Nis is not gonna speak if he's a, if, if 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 he sees that it's a defense against the judge. Mm. Mm. And most of the time, if he he's speaks, a team player. most of the time, if he speaks, he's gonna support the defense. He's gonna come with a law that supports the defense. He's a team player. Mgomisul is also a team player. I, the others, I'm not sure. And he's the one who also is the one who bailed uh, Gomezu mm. by saying he's not here. But he said we should proceed. There's no problem with us proceeding if he said we should proceed. And then you get on, on, on Amin Khan, right? Ah, yeah. yeah. Why getting a question now? Why, why didn't you cross examine and finish your, your, your turn? Very. Uh, we want we want to get it over and done with. In any case, the the, 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 the questions of of Ramusipil, they are always about confirming. So did you write this? Yes, I wrote this. So uh, did you pull this? Yes, I pulled this. Uh, do you confirm everything is correct? Yes. Yeah, so thank you. That's all, my lord. So I mean, we could have finished with Ramusipil. He could have cross-examined. At this, at this moment, we can he always say he, 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 he should be ready. He, he cross-check things in terms of it's a good, actually it's a good thing for him because he's stronger in that. Mm. But to Ramasipi, oh, we'll be done with him. Well, uh, they only came into the trial after the matter started. All majority of these lawyers, except for Advocate Mushalola, she's the only one who's been there from the very beginning. But the rest, they came after the trial. That's what Baloy was saying and telling the judge. Um, and then they proceeded to the witness. Motlo is an investigator at Road Traffic Management Corporation. Not this is the system that he was talking about, and it stands for National Traffic Information System. He went over his qualifications, a metric. Uh, that's what he has, a Bachelor of Admin degree, computer literacy certificate, certificate in forensic and investigative auditing, another advanced certificate in fraud examination, traffic officer diploma, fraud examiner. He's also a peace officer. So February 2008. They will use him next time. February 2008, he worked for the Department of Roads and Transport in Limpopo as an admin officer assistant and at this provincial help desk. Mutlo tells uh, the court about the security of the NATI system and one has a password which cannot be shared with anyone. He said it's a computerized register. Mutlo explained what details the NATI Nati system keeps, including infringement notices, which are traffic fines, contact numbers of the person, the car, the email address, etc., etc. He assisted applications of learners and driver's license at Lubwa Homo Driving Licence Testing Station. Um, yeah, 
everything else about his CV, he went on and on. But then Mutlo said he is an investigator for RTMC. One of his duties is to root out fraud and corruption. He also prepared documents for court and testified in proceedings. All in all, he said, I have 16 years working in Natis, and he explained the security of the system. He said, you cannot share your password with anyone. Ah. If there are any issues arising on your profile, you will be liable for them. He said, no one else has access to Natis except the authorized people. Baloy asked him, have you been granted access to Natis? And Matlo said, yes. Baloy now referred Matlo to his first David. Baloy asked him, what information is stored in this Natis? And Matlo said, personal information, name, residential address, and gender. Matlo said the system also contains the list of all traffic infringements with the, which are fines that a person has. Matlo went to his first affidavit. Uh, he said that he was on duty on the 18th of November 2020. He received the request by email to provide details of a car pertaining to the Senzo case and document his findings regarding Fisogu Shentuli, accused number five, on the request of Gininda. What did he receive? A request. To do what? To extract information pertaining to the car. That's a part that is very important that they should hammer on. This man was requested to pull information about a car or cars. Now, I've got one question with regards to that. Okay. Which car and what did they give? Did they give you a VIN number? Did they give you a number plate? Because no one in this case has ever told us about a number plate of a car. They only told us about colors. And those colors, they keep on changing. There's red, there's, there's white, there's, there's everything that you can silver. think of. There's white now, there's silver. Gray. There's gray. So the, what, were, what were you requested to actually extract on those cars? And what car, what did they give you to extract on the car? Because that is important. You said you were requested to pull something on a car. So I expect your evidence not to be reversed. To start with the car and then you link it to the owner. But it seems as if you have the ID numbers of the clients and then you go there, you pull, and then you start linking and checking all the, the history of these people, which in this case we don't know if it's true or not. And but it's computer-based, so it must be true. Oh, we must ignore the fact that traffic site is the most one of the most probably corrupt uh, department yeah. allegedly yeah and also the cars are mentioned in the confessions but they are not mentioned with number plate it's colors it's just colors that's it so how did you know that you needed to check for this particular car on the system and that it belongs to a particular person H how 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 did oh, you, you were just doing witch hunting on that journey? you did a witch hunting you went to your system you looked for something and very 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 crucial does your system show you when this was created we are not talking mm -hmm. about who accessed information we are talking mm. about when the record was created. Mm. You know? Because the trailer of who accessed the information, I can go in, you can go in, Emil. It's going to say, it's like, um, normally where, where, where I work, we, we call it a, a, a transaction table. Mm. It, it's a table that tells you who touched whatever product that... I mean, wh whatever client's information, when, that's it. Wow. We, are, we are editing something, it shows you that you edited something, it shows, that's a trends table, but when was this record 
initially entered in this computer? And how long does it take? Because the other question that you should ask is, these people have tickets on the road mm. in the middle of nowhere sometimes. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for them to capture that information? When are they expected? What is the... What is a turnaround, turnaround time. time for them to capture such information? And once captured, can it be edited? Because one thing I can almost submit to you is that that system is not live. The one that he was using. Yeah, it's not. I can submit it that. It can never be. I can submit that system is not live. Mm -mm. The one what that he was using is a backup system. Mm. You can... I can denounce it. But they must ask him, is this system live? Are you pulling on the live production? Are you are you are you pulling this information on a live database? I or doubt. this is a backed up database? I doubt. He downloaded that thing and went with it to court. I don't Or it could live. be not that he downloaded it. It could be that it's a backup information. Okay. It's a backup data. So what they do is that the system obviously this is this is like these hundreds and hundreds of information that comes in. So they back information. Maybe they store information for six months and then they back it up. Uh, the other one, they 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 back it up to to the other other servers. Mm. And why I'm saying that, I will tell you why I'm, su I'm submitting that. It's easy to actually say. Uh, for example, he goes in to do this information. There he could only find cars and all that. He did not talk about the license when did Nduli really take this license and all those details. That means that some that is something that is backed on the different server or different uh, database. Mm. So that information is like a middle of of almost everything. Because if you are saying that that information is live, then you should be able to say. Okay, here's Nduli's information. Nduli started engaging with our system, this Nati system. He started from engaging from the, the, the learner, as we are doing with, with these young the ones. Muzi. A. Then with Fisogush, it should have been the same thing to say that this is when he obtained his learners. Yes, yes. This is when he did his learners from the first time he engaged yes. with the Nati But he did not. He started talking about cars and he only came telling us is got a license see what 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 that's it so that tells you that this man is using database that is not live so now the question is if it's not live can it be edited mm. Mm. well the judge said no to a short adjournment he said that they had wasted enough time <laughs> uh avidavid too um, was read now. Matlo, he read information from um, the one concerning accused number five when he was applying or entering into this Nati system. Matlo said, Fisogushen Duli, Nati's records indicate his ID number and he said it and the address, he also said it. And Matlo demonstrated on a screen in court how they access the Nati system. Accused number five, physical Shentuli's details went up, nationality, address, etc. Official language of preference is English. He explained where the personal particulars come from, and he said that when a person registers for a li learner's license, there's a form that he fills which contains a section on the personal particulars, and that's where the information is sourced. He made an application in Binoni. Mind you, the crimes that accused number five was arrested for in 2018 were done in Kwanongoma and he was based in a prison in Pitamaritzbeck, Kalagabusha, if I'm not mistaken, until he was transferred to Hoshimampur in Pretoria for the Senzo Meiwa trial. So let's keep that in mind. Matlow said that accused number one was already holding a C1 license. See, you see the point that Mr. Anonymous was saying. That He's not saying he, he started interacting with us the same way he was doing with the others. He got his learners. What is special about uh, accused number five? And, so and they, they the informative channel is saying, I did post on the comments, Mr. Anonymous, that the system is not live. System is, it is a POC system for Natis. 
when doing POC, you can duplicate database and use the other database on the offline mode. Can it be edited? Anything is possible if you have enough access. So the address was changed in 2011, <laughs> September the 5th. <laughs> Status still active. He called his cell phone number. He was allowed to move or merge, not restricted. So he didn't have a restricted license. So 2011, September the 5th, address not verified. He said that the office in Dulu went to is Binoni. Matlo, in this case, he said, it means if you need to retrieve a file of this accused, you need to approach Binoni for his documents. Matlo indicated that Fisoku Shentuli changed his address in 2011 according to Nati's system. Matlo said, the first affidavit, the traffic infringement that are on the profile, an infringement was issued to the vehicle and the person handwritten. Uh, the ticket, this is a ticket now, it was handwritten. So Matlo said that if it's handwritten, it means that uh, the traffic officer stopped you along the road and they will issue you with a ticket. So the particulars are F Nduli, who's accused number five. Matlo asked about how the cell phone number is obtained and Matlo said police ask the person for their cell phone number. In this instance, Nduli was the one who gave his phone number to the officer. He listed the number plates, but they stopped him from mentioning the engine number, which I found very sus. Why did he stop him from mentioning the engine number? <laughs> he said that it will be mentioned if it's necessary or if it becomes necessary. And I'm like... So the Nati's record revealed that above infringement while operating a vehicle on the 15th of July 2013, a street identified as Cleveland at 1021 in the afternoon, the vehicle was stopped and issued with infringement, a ticket. Yeah, I think informative is on fire, so I'm going to keep on disturbing you. I agree with you, informative. In order to connect on a live system, especially for a department, you need know, to use things like uh, VPN. But he did not talk about that. Mm. So he just went and connected for some weird reason. No internet uh, specification, mm. whether he was on the internet or what. Mm. It, it just came as a off uh, systems like. Uh, you are doing a uh, simulation, you are done with everything, you, you have pulled whatever that you need to pull, you just press that thing and then it gives you what you want. So, VPN. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it, you need, you, you can't use live system without such protections. Mm. They need to protect their system, otherwise you will hack them every day. Hmm. So. <laughs> It will be interesting to know whether a VPN was used or not. The defense has risen up again on a point of relevance. Nisi for accused number three objected. Oh, sorry, before you go, did they mention who gave that ticket, the initial ticket? Did they? No. No, the they first didn't. one, no. Okay. It didn't have a name. So it was a ticket that didn't have an owner. Doesn't tell you who issued it mm -mm. initially. Mm -mm. Just a ticket. It's a ticket. Mm -hmm. Nisi for accused number three objected and said all that is happening here is irrelevant now. Advocate Nisi said that the court should adjourn so that they can discuss with the state. Baloy said that it is relevant. The cell numbers will tie up with the evidence of Colonel Stain. The charges these accused are facing has nothing to do with traffic offenses. Okay. And the judge said the onus is on Mr. Mnisi to show that the evidence is irrelevant. And Mnisi said the charges that the accused are facing have nothing to do with traffic offenses. And the judge said he doesn't know. <laughs> I was feeling the frustration as well. I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> why? Why are we hearing about people's tickets? I... 
they are personal life. Next thing we're gonna be hearing who they. And you know what? The worst thing is they're sharing their ID numbers, their personal information. I'm like, yo. Correct. By the time you are done with these people, you want them to be so out there. Everything, their personal information now. Yeah, it's, it's going to be out there. It's public information. Yeah. Then Nisi said that it's an it's in the indictment. The judge still overruled him, and Nisi reminded him that what Baloy said he will prove was that accused number one was in Gauteng in 2014, and now they are reading evidence pertaining to accused number five. The judge said the state is pertaining all the accused. The judge, the state said that all this evidence is pertaining all the accused. So the judge was kind of annoyed, and Baloy went to the first. Affidavit. Matlow said 90s records show Fisogushan Tulu was issued with infringement notice by traffic officer MJ Sitole from JMPD. So now it is mentioned the name MJ Stofile from mm. JMPD. Yes. So the ticket shows his phone number, address, white VW hatchback on the 2nd February 2016. Matlow said infringement notice for F and Duly accused number five. Matlow named another infringement by JMPD and the driver was in Duly F. The car is a VW Polo. The car is gray. He says the person who was driving gave them his address and telephone number. So, so far, Matlow has revealed that a silver VW that Ntuli received an infringement on was owned by BMW Services. Its previous owner was Banakomu Fleet and Shuttle. He said this indicated this was a vehicle hiring company. Where does that help us? I have no idea. But I can tell you right now, if you were to go and pursue that. Uh, in fact, if you were to ask this guy, who paid the ticket for this this car? Was it ever paid? Was it ever paid? Mm. Because from my gathering is that it was sold eventually or it was owned by someone else and it changed the Eastern, in, in Eastern Cape, actually. Hmm. Uh, that's, there's a new number plate that it got, which has Eastern Cape EC. Hmm. So, who paid the tickets for this guy? Was it the driver? Was it what, the what company, happened? the shuttle, and, fleet and, and shuttle if company? it's a shuttle, if it's a borrowed car, then it has a, some sort of AVL or mm. something like that. Mm. It can be tracked. Yes. Instead of you bringing us things that are re- irrelevant here, if you got that car and you suspect that is the car, then come back with information that hey, but solid. Hey, no, 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 hey, no, no, don't tell these people to well, do that. Like no, they will, they will, they will, they will go. They will. Hey, these people, they will come with information. Don't be careful of what to ask. So I've learned not to ask such things. From Gar- the state. Gar- the power is such that I would ask the defense to actually if. They want to rebut that information. Probably you'll find that this man never even hired that car. But not from the state. No, I, thank, no, I, I thank the state in advance. Us, uh, I would no, never ask the state. Because the state hey, is very good uh, when it comes to these things. They yeah. said in Tanzi made no transactions on the weekend. To that ah, the been. states. No, 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 no. They say... The AVL or that ever tracker that was was loading. What is it called? They would say it was loading. GPS and but it was last seen around Fosloras. It was <laughs> loading. <laughs> GPS unlocked. <laughs> GPS unlocked. <laughs> well, Valo said, who furnishes the address and phone number? And Matlo said that the driver would give those details. So Baloy took him to the second affidavit 
And he said on the 14th of September 2023, he was requested by Brigadier Kininda to investigate whether any of the accused had made transitions on the Nazi system. Received request from Brigadier Kininda to assist in establishing the following whether any of the persons applied for a driving license or learners between December 2013 to December 2014. Here's the catch around Boxback. Around Boxback. What is special about Boxback? It's where the incident of Senzo occurred. So the district, it's not exactly, but the, it's, it's the same region. It's like the same region, East Rand. So, where, where is that? <laughs> I have it. I, you guys said uh, people are smart. Where, where is that? I mean, me asking for a license or getting a license around Boxback helping. More so if I'm not Muzi, for example. Mm -hmm. where, where is that helping? I don't know. Really, I don't know. This 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 evidence is very. <laughs> it's one of the strangest thing I've I've, I've seen. I, I don't know how to interpret this. So whether they were issued and what process was followed, Matlow said the letter had names with their ID numbers. He went on to mention their names, accused one to five. Muzi Temba, Sibia, Fiso, Gushen, Tulim, Togo, Sima, Pisa, Bongani, Tanzim, Tobi, Singube, with their IDs. And he said, I found information on the Nati system. I checked Muzi Sibia, Nati's records indicated his ID number. He also mentioned his cell phone number. And he said he said he stays at Suto Hostel in Fosloras. Then Matlo said, I found information. He said he, say, he, said he stays. Please play, pay attention to the details. He stays at Suto Hostel. Now you are feeling for your driver, so what, what? And this is the address you give. You are saying, I'm staying at Suto Hostel. <laughs> and guess what, guess what, guess what? Uh, some, I, some, uh, well, well, not even, I, some witness who's very crucial in, in Zoom, he said this man went out with them. Mm-hmm. Because he was not staying in that hostel, right? Mm. To yes. where he stayed. They dropped yes, him off. They dropped him off. But they're still using Bakele is got this Basutung hostel. Now I'm confused. It's not even Basutung hostel. But a Suto hostel in Fosfolaras. That's the address he filled in. Goko Lena's department. He he filled in Gishalawa Suto Hostel. No one B, one C. Stuff like that. I mean, I mean, Auntie. Uh, now we are hearing that uh, Tanzis was able to see one B, mm, one B, one B room, one B. Madlo then said, "I found information on the Nati system. I checked Muzi's B and Nati's records indicated his ID number, mentioned his cell phone number." He stays at Suso Hostel in Fosloras. Matlow showed on the system in court, and he said on the 17th of July 2014, 90s records indicate there was a request for booking learners or driver's license. 22nd of July 2014, CBR accused number one. He failed his license, and another application was made on the same day. So they're saying that he wrote, and then afterwards he went all the way... <laughs> To the he went then booked another appointment. You know I am laughing. On let the me, same day. Let me tell you I am laughing. <laughs> yeah, so I I wrote a test, uh, Lena's test. Okay. Uh, so this other guy, it seemed like the guy paid. You know, you know how it is, man. These people. So it seems like the guy paid. Okay. For for, for this test to be written for him. It seemed like that. I would say so. Mm. So, what happened is that this guy did not understand computer. Clar. <laughs> they told him, he was sitting next to me, he asked me, where should I press? Okay, I show as they showed us. Mm. 
that you should press here to to enter and choose whatever is South Africa and all that. And this guy, he he went in to the questions. So he waited, but he couldn't wait. He was agitated. You know, he wanted he never. To, he never. Yes. So what happened is he ended up cre- he ended up closing the test. And once you close that test, yeah, answer. once you close it, it does not come back. It's gone. It's zero. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> what did he do after you? you that guys guy who was testing us is like, hey, chief, you closed the test. I told you not to. <laughs> you must go. <laughs> so the guy did exactly what Musi did. So he went. He went and booked <laughs> the same time. That's what I think. Guy went and booked. <laughs> he was so pissed. When I asked him outside, he's like, hey, this thing cost me a thousand five. Hey. Hey. Hmm. Things are tough here. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. But I'm a South Africa. <laughs> why, why is that you take up? <laughs> hey, people like to. Why do we do that? Just study for the damn license. Why? Yeah, so yeah, I I guess Tanzi went and booked. That's what I'm trying to think. Tanzi booked again. <laughs> when so did there you are write? people who actually book on the same day after they Yeah, failed. after failing, yes. They, they, I <laughs> they could never the do line. that. I still have to go through studying first. And then I'll book maybe like when I feel ready to When write. did Tanzi write? He said it shouldn't be July, more than 22nd of July two 2014. Days. When did you fail? On the same day, July twenty second, and he wrote fourteen on July twenty second. But he went to book another test, and he wrote again. But the payment had not been made yet to confirm. Oh, so he wrote on the twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like it. So the notice shows that he took a test on the twenty second of July twenty fourteen in Brackburn, and he res- his results were a fail. But we wanted to know in which language did accused number two write their learners. But Lo said that it was not specified because it was handwritten. <coughs> now, this is where the joke is. The system is supposed to capture, even your exam was supposed to say that you wrote it in English or in Zulu. Yes. Yes. Well, there's a lot of flaws in the system. <laughs> when you were supposed to talk about when uh, the gray, this hashtag Polo Gray or something, this the, the one from BMW something. The date was never set there. Mm-mm. He never mentioned the date after that. No. And Baloy said mentioned the date, but he didn't remind him to mention the. He never mentioned the date after that because the date maybe is probably gonna say twenty twenty seventeen or so. You think? Yeah, I can bet you money there. Matlo said that that language was not specified, and he asked if asked if he knew if it was written in any other languages. Matlo said he only knew Sibedi English and Afrikaans. Says someone who's got experience there. He does not know that there are other languages that. Yeah, but still, you have access to all. You you said your system. If you have access. To, you can access what happened. You even access what happened when on Goma with Lokuzan. Mm. That's when eventually you talk about Zulu. Even after you saw that actually on your records that you are testifying about, you see that things were filled in Mapisa's things were filled in Zulu. Mm. And you still don't know uh, other languages. Well, he wrote for the learner's license on 15th of September 2014 at Boxback and passed. So after the long adjournment, Matlo went to Mtogosisima Pisa. 25th of July 2014, his information was introduced for the first time into Nathis at the Brakban Driving Center. The language he preferred for his learners is also English. 
the registering authority where he is transacting is non Goma. And 2015, February the 13th, is the date of change of address. Bongani Sandi Sontanzi does you see not that change exist of address. Of the who? Who changes? Who goes and changes address there by the Nati system and say, hey, by the way, I no longer stay in in KZ and in Wanongoma. Now know. I'm in I'm in box back. <laughs> I really don't that, know. That small change of address, I that thing's fishy, man. I don't know. Then for Bongani Sandi Sontanzi, he does not exist on the system of Nati's. So in other terms, he has no driver's license or learner's license or any traffic tickets or any vehicles registered under his name. He has never even bought even a bike mm. to do an Uber. Yet he's a weapons, what, what. Mm. But he's a weapons. The only thing he is, do, is capable of doing is carrying those weapons. In black and plastic bags. And supply them and... In black plastic bags, and he carries ammunition. I, this is just. Toby, <laughs> 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 Prince Mube, he said he was living in Togoza, and the witness said that he resided in in Pretoria. Which I was like, okay. This this witness Matlo lives in Pretoria. Mm. Around Pretoria. Around Pretoria. Tulani Mgomezulu for accused number one asked to be excused as there was a judgment in another matter that he needed to attend. And uh, he said that he will be back. Well, Matlo yeah, said... Him, go make your coin, bro. There's, there's nothing we can say. Go make your coin. Things are tough here. Yeah. Things are very tough, eh? Yeah, when, you are dealing, economy. when you are dealing with people that have a potential of paying you. Go get the money. Well, between 2013 and 2014, uh, registered for Mube accused number three, first vehicle transaction in 2015, was for a minibus. So that is a, what, a taxi? Mm, a taxi. It was for a taxi in 2013 to 2014. So in a nutshell, we have just told you that this testimony was as useless as they come, but it still needs to be refuted <laughs> because it, it is it is true in front of Watch how child. they force it in. Watch. Observe. <laughs> it's not helping with anything, but watch how it is just marinated in how how it it's made to mean something. Let us observe. The lines are now open. You guys can now call in. And I think, Mr. Anonymous, at this point, mm -hmm. we should all accept that the Mayor family might never get justice. Nah, eh? they must forget. <sighs> they must just make peace with it mm -hmm. because this is torture. If they are looking for a real one, nah, they must forget. What they might get, however, is... People who will be crying their lungs out in jail because they didn't do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's basically what they will get. Hey, Mr. Anonymous and uh, Sis Emily. Uh, I'm here regarding the apology of Judge um, Hartley. Uh, his apology it somehow uh, I don't believe it's genuine you can look the way he he presents himself the way he utters some of his words and they struggle in reading his speech. You can see that this man is forced to do what he did. So, uh, but there's nothing we can do. But you, uh, we, the ones who know how he conducts himself, we see it in another light. Uh, he did what he did. It's there. 
in the public domain. We know how he is. That will never change. This judge is out of order. And I'm glad that this happened. Because now each and every one uh, who was on the other side, believing that he is a good uh, judge, maybe from now onwards, they, 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 they will change the, the way they think about him. But uh, for this case, I don't see justice coming from him. He is not fair. He is not neutral. He took uh, 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 the state side. So we'll just wait for his judgment. But we know how it will be. I thank you, uh, my brother and sister. And good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, if you cannot call, you can always do a voice call. A voice mm. note. And please like the video, guys. Please like the video. I know someone. What is that? How do you pronounce this 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 word that Nisi use, Emily? Nagotri. 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 Uh, they say it means pointless. Pointless. Mm. <laughs> the English of the lawyers. <laughs> Nuggetry. So I'm, guys, I'm adding it to my, my vocab. Nuggetry. Yeah, I'll definitely use it also once I know how to pronounce it properly. Because I don't want someone to say, please repeat it. No, no, no. I must get it proper. Uh, Mr. Natis is still going to be with us on, on Monday, and I hope it's not going to be long. It's going to be short. should just ask him the questions, like, is the system live? Uh, what happens if it's offline? Uh, what happens? Can it be edited? Can it? Have they ever had a situation where system was... Mzanzi, hello? Mzanzi, hello? hello? I say, how are you? Hey, Mr. Anand, Mr. Anand. Like, in a nutshell, what is happening in court, which is referring to as nonsense, it's not us, it's him. Uh, <laughs> even Cronier was said to to tell us that uh, what what was the way that was running she was running away from. So yeah, we are still gonna have this. Uh, what is it? Hide and seek that is happening there. Nothing is matching basically, but we still continue in any case. Forward we forge. That's what we do. That's what the caller is saying. It's 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 rau rau. It's meaningless. It's not going anywhere. 
uh, it gives a vibe of it should have been stopped long time ago uh, we're, we're but thinking. because the judge was wrong for some weird reason the judge was wrong to continue with this and they were they let that maybe if it was a, the, the judge that was dedicated for this case maybe just maybe this case wouldn't have seen the day and the light but well uh Maumela took it yeah and he continued to it even if we are born good it's not working today we are here Hi, today we are here we are on highway now uh but skansi samba nge site le one nzansi hello nzansi hello hello hi sir how are you eh njani sikona eh eh tsana mo za ba anonymous eh no email <laughs> yeah, they focused on uh, some of the things I think they did not yeah, they just focused on things that were there are things that would throw um, you off. But the latest mon gazun ga bona ga tsinga manga cause do you remember what to who knows what in the less pam in the west pam what to and I can less pam less I was so sad to blue but the man was not but it was not hey yeah and to level when in love and to go into us now in 2016 then zoom will have a new work room and about 2014 ish hmm what happened in zoom before that was the first one I've been in Zungula. 2014. As I was there, I mean. 2014. 2014. Mm. Hey. Yes. So I could manage and I could manage and learn to go to a little from a Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't understand because they 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 there are people who claim that they are helping or they are with them and they have such information why didn't they, they use it they have the information i mean <laughs> but the latest one about how to be like ngamanga and then into us now go no kwabi nenza 2016 hey no i hear you Ah I thank you thank you thank you naming proud. Shabong. Now me that's part of the reason why I Eba. lost a little bit of faith. Nay kumbula le ya file le ya snack ngosiam. Ah. Don't do research of it. And it had the date and everything of when this person was in hospital. All they needed to do was contact the person who had the file. Who had the file. I'm sure they would be willing to help. They're because that that was a contradiction in Zungu's statement yeah, a serious can one. open that a serious one it was not a and the judge hey hey like the english part the judge wants it wants english because 
go they get understand. the sections and the and the and the judgments and the and the cases that support and recall him. No, he wants them to speak English. The judge wants them to speak English. I mean, like English people's lives are on the line. Okay, when they speak English, then we have a kweba fail. <laughs> That's all he wants. He wants one who's gonna come and say, "Hey, these people actually spoke English to me." Yeah, he wants. He's obsessed about them wanting to speak English because he wants to, to prove that they are to liars. Prove that, no, no, he wants to prove that they they actually understood what they were signing. Oh, he's still on that thing. He knows that, that that thing. He was not even supposed to entertain. Because I was even surprised. Why hello. is he emphasizing English? Hello, Zanzi reality. Hi, Zanzi reality. Hello. Hello. I say, how are you? I'm alright. Yes, sir. Um, I I think on the on the Sinako issue, mm. um, it it was raised in court. You know, I actually talked about. I actually asked Zoom about it. Mm-hmm. And Zoom decided to. <laughs> Zung was trying to be evasive. He, 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 he even said, "I know you can't. I can't talk about Sinako because I heard that is late." Oh. So, yeah, if you remember that testimony, yeah. he was asked by Numa. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So this he is said, how it is he said that. Yeah, <laughs> strangely, the, the, if if you you followed that evidence, Numa asked him. About Sinako, isn't it? About when Kwavini shot Sinako. And Zungu evaded that question and the brother kept quiet. He didn't ask him to answer the question. Then later on, Mishodolo, Mishodolo asked, actually, Mishodolo told uh, Zungu that accused number five will come to court and, and, and say he was not in. He was not in the. He actually said, let, 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 let me put it exactly as she said. Yeah, she said, accused number five will come to court and, and, and say that he was never at Masuchini was still on, on, on the 26th of October 2014. Mm. Any comment? Then Zungu said, no comment. Then, then when Shogolo went on to, to move to on to another issue, the judge actually said, the judge actually interjected and said to Zungu, you must you didn't answer that question. Mm. Did, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. That. Yeah. So the judge reminded because then the judge went on to say, uh, Shogolo is saying, I choose number five will come and testify that he was never at at Masutini Hostel on the 26th of October 2014. Mm. Answer that question. And the judge was, said, was only interested in yeah. that. Yeah. So the judge was actually leading Zungu to to give him the answer that he wanted. And Zungu said, no, I swear I was with him. He was there. Mm. And then Cholelo moved to another issue. So you can see the, the how the judge favors the state. Yeah, the one sided. The man is one sided. I'm sorry, man. I, I, there's no other way. We've been pushing around this thing. The man is just one sided. Yeah. On the, on the Kwabin issue, I remember very well that was only yeah. normal last. I remember. Also. Yeah. It was not entertained. It yeah. was not made a big issue. Mm, it wasn't. You tried for about. I think the way the way. We might have tried to 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 elicit an answer from Zungu for, for maybe for more than a minute. Mm. Zungu was still trying, was still aggressive, and the judge kept quiet and allowed him to. Zungu was saying, "Hey, well, Sinako, I, I can't talk about him because he's late. I have to respect his family. And I only learned about it this week that he's late, but." Why, 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 uh, what is the, the whole case about? Isn't it that the whole case is about Senzo is also late? Mm. Mm. How many people, 
How many people who, who have passed on were mentioned in that court? There is Mapena. There is Senzo. There is Wutele. There is the one who wrote. Yeah, there is Ndov. The neighbor. Wutele. Yeah. Much. Yeah. So, and Zungu was busy talking about Senzo. The, the, the actual killing, the, he was talking about how this guy, this guy is killed Senzo. But he can't talk about Sinako. What is the difference? I mean, Rata has been messing up this case, if you ask me. That's my two cents. Yeah. And that's, that's my... And today, today, his apology, yesterday, his apology was even half He started telling us that in 1977, 50 years ago, because he loves 50. Mm. <laughs> Fifty years ago, he formed. He helped to form the the Black Layers Association. So, he was, in other words, he was simply saying, "I can't apologize to 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 a, to a group that I I formed. Mm. You guys, you guys are too small. I actually gave birth to you." Yeah, that's basically in a nutshell <laughs> what he said. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to correct about the the. And then some, some actually some some people are saying some lawyers are saying that the, you can only verify somebody's numbers through a section two or five. Mm. Not not using evidence that was being laid by 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 the lawyer today. <laughs> and that guy that guy is not even an expert. He should be some someone who works maybe some front office staff or something, but definitely is not an expert. Yeah, they've they've declared him an expert. Yeah, so the, the good thing about describing him as an expert is that I hope the defense will ask him technical issues. Yeah, like like the, the, the issue of data itself. How does it go yeah. in the system? Is it created? Yeah. Does it show? Those things. What are the strengths and weaknesses of that system? Yes. How, you know, how does it generate data? Exactly. And, and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. What are the... Well, of course, maybe the, this one, you would say it's, it's, it's not it's a security issue. But they should ask him technical things. Then if by way of they will tell him that, no, we're, we're dealing with an expert here. Yes. You want and then this? that will... Yeah, that will be the end of him. Yeah. No. Or they can even prove it. They can even give him maybe take an, an ID of of somebody who died and give him and say, that, "Can you generate the the data for this the, the motor vehicle data for this person?" You wanna see? Yeah, and then you will see him getting stuck. Yeah, no, I get you. No, thank yeah. you, man. Yeah, good night. Thank you. Guys, just like the video, just like the video, just like the video, like the video. Um, we are on 378, 620. Come on, guys, put it on five at least. Let's hear. Let's go. 500. 500. Uh, greetings, Mr. Anno and Emily. Yes. And to our wonderful viewers. Uh, are you speaking to uh, Mr. Anonymous from Cape Town? Uh, you know, uh, I once called, but uh, I think it was few months back and i addressed the political aspect of this case mm. uh, which has been uh, neglected by uh, all of us uh, i think we've been too naive uh, we've been too naive because uh, we we were dealing with uh, people who have expressed the power the level of power that they have they've shown us that they have judicial power they have power over the police departments and units and their financial resources. And they've shown us clearly that uh, they even have power to delete people mysteriously. So, so we it was clear and evident here yeah, that we were not dealing with uh, your normal uh, villains here. Yeah. We are dealing with people, uh, people, serious people with serious political connections. Now, what we were naive about is that with the power that they've shown us, it was clear that uh, the politics uh, began from the removal of Judge Maumel. 
uh, I agree with Advocate Defoe and the, the rest. But one thing uh, with what is uttered and so forth is from the beginning of the case. But I do think that uh, Judge Mahomeda, for one, uh, was the good judge here. Yeah. Uh, for one reason, is that anyone, guys, you know, once you understand this, this political game of these people, uh, they don't just don't disappoint. Everyone who's an enemy of the establishment, uh, you just see them by being attacked by all media organs, by all uh, uh, state infrastructure, states, uh, organs, and all these things. Because we know that these state organs, guys, uh, are not what we uh, are not what, what what's, what's the correct term to use. Are not independent from politics. Uh, we people might be naive and people might disagree, but state organs are controlled by the governing party. So there's no way you can make them independent from politics. Look, judicial, uh, uh, the, the judicial of the country, the legislature and the administration gets command from the truly house. It's controlled by the NC. And they use those state organs as an apparatus to fight whoever who, who goes against them. And once they start going against you, you must know that there's something right you're doing. The same thing they're doing to Nosivio uh, uh, Mapisa, Nagula. Uh, you know there's something up. Yeah, we know Intel tells us that uh, there's something up with her and Ramaphosa. Because once they, we, once you see NCA, SAPC all over your case, you must know. All is alleged. Everything is alleged. It's alleged. I'm skeptical. I'm continuing with this. No, continue. Now. It's not going to do any harm. No, there's something wrong. The way they exposed Judge Mahomeda shows us that there was a personal vendetta against that man. And they're trying by all means to crush him. Next thing to follow is that he died of stroke and he died of stress and so forth. It is the same thing. Now, that's the naiveness that we, 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 we hear once they remove that, because we, we, we have this thing that we want to now believe that uh, Judge Racha is neutral, which is not true. He can't, because if the people have judicial power, then they have power over judges. Look at what they did to Kronje and all. They have power, these people. And what these people did uh, is that they failed to calculate the generation or dispensation, dispensation that we're living in. We're living in this uh, internet generation, and the internet is a quantum space that cannot be controlled by anyone. Uh, so they could not uh, control the power which came with uh, social media and 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 uh, uh, the, the internet basically because you, you if you can see now uh, people are relying more on podcast which is part of social media and social media to get facts because they're not relying on and on, on, on sensor me on, on on these enca channels and all these things you they've seen how biased these channels are because they are state organ which are being used to to indoctrinate the masses now, these people were expecting that they were going to crush this case, just like they did with the Kreja case and all the many other cases. These people, you can see that this, this strategy, they've been doing it for years. They know this thing. And you, you can even see the same patterns in the AKA case. They are so used to this thing. But God planted it for deliberately them. And they had not calculated how much pressure social media was going to happen. Because remember what brought uh, the Senzo Mio case to, to live now. It was because of it was the anniversary of Senzo Mio. And there was a hype. And t- remember, Twitter was buzzing. What happened to Senzo Mio? What happened to Senzo Mio? And then uh, 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 they started to feel pressure. Because they did not calculate. That. They, they, you see, they've been doing these things and using media and using all these uh, uh, organs that they have, but they can't control podcasts. They can't control uh, social media. So they have no power over that. And that's where people are spending most time. And I like what you all you guys are doing, you, Bongani, everyone, because uh, you're bringing, you're bringing different elements to this thing. So they can't now uh, control you guys. They can't shut gun. And it's good, this thing that you're not working together. It's fine. Just leave it like that. Because they, 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 they won't be able to, they will close this one. Another one is going to open. So it's, this thing is, is, is a can of worms which has been best open. Now, they removed uh, Judge Maumela, put in Judge uh, Rata. 
and uh, Judge Raja's op- agenda here is one, guys. <laughs> Remember, we are moving to elections now, and Judge Raja's objective was to speed up the case, speed up judgment. The goal here is that to to they want to use the the double jeopardy skill. It's a trick, old school trick. They want to convict these guys so that they get they know once once these guys are convicted for the sins of me, you mad. It's going to be difficult for NPA to allow prosecution for uh, a matter which has been closed. By law, such won't be allowed. You understand? That's what they are pushing for. That's why even if you can see, if you can judge the tone, the argument of the judge, every time he mentions the JP, JP, it is all about time to him. Let's conclude this case. It is all about concluding the case, but it is not about finding the truth. It is not only, it's not, but it's, it's, not, it's not to him, it's not about convicting uh, 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 the, the culprits who are guilty. It is all about concluding the case. That's what he was, he came from. That's why he can't, that's why he can't entertain uh, delays now, because they are trying to push for it before this thing for elections. Why? It is not about campaign. The ANC has already failed in, when it comes to this case. The reason why uh, is because of, uh, since these things are controlled by the governing party, once this thing changes once election come uh, it is clear that uh, these elections are, 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 are there's going to be set of change there's going to be coalition and there's going to be set a shift in government biggie Kale is not going to return as the minister of police and once there's a political shift in uh in, in the positions which they are using to influence this position heads are going to roll once a, a, a minister of defense changes heads are going to roll Heads are going to roll because you remember Ramaphosa and 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 and, and, and all from the same couple. <laughs> you are mentioning him a lot. I'm sorry, cut. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. We would like to continue with your <laughs> line of thinking and uh, <laughs> just to to put you at ease. We we. we uh, we never ignore politics. Um, as much we as you, as much as you say, um, this world uh, that we are at allows for that. No, not exactly. You talk about politics, you are almost doomed. You enter the battlefield. Hey, so that's why we speak in riddles. Sometimes we try. We being try, but being direct is an enemy ah. on its own. Mzansi, hello. Hello, Mister Anonymous. How are you? I'm good, and how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hello, sis Emily. Hi. Uh, I just want to say something very quick. Um, I'm going back to the tribunal, right? Uh, I just want to comment about it. Uh, Justice Mlambu, he said, like, um, uh, it wasn't a way that uh, just, uh, Judge Maumela, like, he was presiding in that case. Mm. You know, like, how can you say that you are not a way that he was presiding in that case that was being placed on TV? I believe that is a government department, right? So, in my own knowledge, right, um, Everything that happens within the organs of the state, he is the superior. It has to be approved. You just don't wake up and decide to go and do something without the approval of somebody who is above you, especially the case of that magnitude. So for me, it was just weird, like what he was saying. Um, He's been thrown under the bus. I know like he has his own weaknesses, what we all saw but like sometimes like i was just thinking about it yesterday and then i'm like what if this man was frustrated by whatever was happening behind his back what if like that behavior he was kind of like communicating in a certain way saying something without saying it especially if you're first with some things that you cannot fight alone sometimes you just have to act and act quietly. They say action speaks louder than words. If we are to go and dig deeper into the reason why 
those cases were outstanding for so many years, if he's given a chance to say things, he might say things that will shock us, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my comment. And the other thing, um, coming to the judge that's currently there, right? My fear is that he will convict people who are innocent. And we know, like, we have witnessed some cases of people who've been convicted whilst they're innocent. This, there's this guy, what's his name, Mbopa, from KZN, right? Yes. He's been out on bail for over 10 years now, and there is no end in sight as to when they are going to conclude his case. His life is just in limbo. So you see, it's a pattern of things that they're used to doing and getting away with it. But thank God, like now, there is social media, like what the previous caller said. Everything is just coming to light. And people, they are talking. People are not quiet. And people are protesting. This talking that we do, like here, it's a form of protest. Mm -hmm. And believe me, they know it gets to them. So all we have to do you and I, we have to keep on making the noise. And I'm glad because now a lot of people are very much aware. We need, we, we, we have to try everything in our power to avoid another Mbopa situation. That guy's story is very sad because like he's still on bail. He's still on bail. There's nothing like that they are saying about concluding his case. Like his life is just stagnant. And it's just a sad situation. I wouldn't want something like that to happen again. Like to these guys, they're clearly, clearly innocent. Every person, like they can see that this, this these people are innocent. It's just Jay, these hidden agendas. But like, it's just not fair. So we have to keep on pressing the accelerator, pressing. It's the best that we can do. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. All is alleged. The views shared here are those of the viewers. And I'm um, just on the previous voice note, actually, I'm still thinking about Hello, Mr. Anonymous and as Emily. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say allegedly, but for the sake of your channel, let me say allegedly. It's all alleged. Okay, fine. So, ah, uh, so, Zansi, hello. Hi, Mr. Anonymous, how are you? I'm good, sir, how are you? I am all right. I'm live. Yes. Hello? Yes, we are live. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anonymous, I'm not going to mention names tonight. Okay. Uh, but, I, I just want to understand something. Maybe you can also uh, put me at ease now here. Number one, uh, I'm seeing a lot of police now coming to confess. Now that makes me worry. Who's now working at the police station? Because it looks like all the police are out for confession. Now all we see is police, police, police. Now the police stations are empty. But now having said that, what I want to ask is that uh, the evidence that was introduced by the state via the people who were in the house, people who were in the house, people who saw everything, it was kicked out by the expert, it was kicked out by the defense, like the issue of the gun was ruled out, the issue of DNA was ruled out, the issue of the dress was ruled out, the issue of the gold tooth was ruled out. So everyone who was in the house witnessed that those guys, they came there, their evidence was ruled out. So we agree on that one. Mm. Mr. Anonymous? Yes, I'm, I'm listening. Yes. Now, we are busy with the issue of the confessions. Mm. 
we are busy with the issue of the concession. Hey, this, all these police are coming. No, they said this, they said that. And I'm worried. And I'm asking myself, oh man, these police of ours, they must be clever and they must be, they, 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 they must be well trained to get so clean concessions. Like they arrest you for killing someone, you just say, ah, oh, no. Come here, let me tell you what happened. This is the, this is I did, this is what I did, this is what I did, I don't understand. <laughs> now my question is at the end, the judge is gonna rule the case or is gonna uh, his judgment, is it gonna be based on the confessions or the evidence in the house? What how is this ruling gonna come about? Confession. Confessions. Yes. So, so the, um, the, the, the the evidence that was said by the people who were in the house, the guns and the DNA, that they do away with them now. A bit of it. Ah, now I, 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 I am, I am worried now. You know, you know, uh, there's, uh, 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 there's this thing, man, this program that is playing at the Zanzibar Magic. It's called Afin Afinna. Mm. On in that program, if everyone who's listening can go and watch episode number four. What happened to that guy is exactly what is happening to Bondang as he was explaining what happened to him. Exactly. Because they said there was some political figure was killed somewhere. They went and picked up some other guy who was just sleeping in his mom's house. Mm. They said that guy, the way they beat him up, he just saw to say, if you say, I see him, it doesn't work. He just mm-hmm. said, I must just agree so that these people will stop beating me up. They say he, they, beat the, they beat him up in such a way that I think he messed himself. They even gave him a newspaper to clean himself up. Then he said, I couldn't want no woman so that at least I can be taken to jail where I will not be beaten like this. Mm-hmm. Exactly what happened. Mm. And another thing that another thing that guy said that makes me think is the same thing. He said they they went to his friend to say, no, when a friend confessed to say your 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 guy did that thing, then that guy said there's no way you rather kill me did not confess. Then the guy was sent to life sentence and whatnot. At the end of the day, there was there was a letter that came out to say no, some other guy committed suicide and they only know to confess and put all the names of the people who committed that offense, you see. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm scared, man. I mean, I'm scared. I'm scared. If now they're going to be with the confessions versus the evidence, I don't know now. But anyway, this is Mr. I want my data. Yeah. So it's fine. Let's just keep on listening and following the show and the court and see what happens. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Menef. Thank you. Seems like we need to unpack Mpopa's case. Hey. Hey, let me... Similar. I um information Ilonga, this guy was representing it in court today. Mm. I mean, yesterday. Mm. Uh, especially uh, a case to number five. So... All that information is all three seventy five. Makuwa kiana ilongo ona investigate that this guy ka. Oh, they don't want you to finish, eh? Right? Another case. Kiana at William Horo like um Dulu o hire that polo. That twenty sixteen o hire that polo. Atu a kauti ngaena atama aya um. Case at N half is a ruler two days. I mean, I don't know now why Basabua Gayan like got the whole information, and then I don't know, but all that information it's all 375. I can say, yeah, yes, now that you are mentioning it. Okay. Hey, my daughter. 
Ah. Did you hear? Do, do, do you want to interpret? No, no, like the, the caller here just mentioned something that I wasn't even thinking about. To say that all this information about accused number five's <laughs> vehicles, the registration number, whatever, whatever, could have been pulled by Makubo while he was investigating him for the other cases, allegedly. Hey, go tough, go rough, go rave. Because Remember accused officer, number five was arrested by Makubo. By Maku. Warren Officer Makubo for the multiple murders that he did. And then what, what Bafigo Omayagas, you know those ones who come and just rinse. Because the docket is there. Mm, just come and rinse. They pull the dockets, allegedly. All allegedly. that is said here is alleged. alleged. It's alleged. But alleged. I, I, was, I was like, mm, and and how the movements of the car do not exactly synchronize with this crime in particular. You know, it, nah. it, they don't really synchronize. They're, they're there is no AVL. There's nothing must to synchron. There's no AVL exactly. Mm. It's 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 like guys, please like the video. Straws. We are like. We're looking for something. We're, we're just looking for something, a connection, anything. Yeah, it, that's a problem in South Africa. Any, uh, uh, but in, in Zulu, we say, Basically, what we mean is that anything can happen. You can sleep today, a free person. Tomorrow, uh, you are the most wanted. Mm. Hi, Mr. Anonymous. Oh, it's gone. You made a mistake. Did you say someone's name? <laughs> Guys, no name dropping. No, Sizzle is saying, I must tell you that no name dropping here. Find a way of putting your story oh, without, you know. Aha. And you now you understand when this we, person, this person, you're mentioning them by name. It's like when, whoa. When we, now you understand. Now when we we, we we sit down and 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 discuss before we produce, it's because of that. That's yes. why we don't just come early, because anything that needs to be eliminated, it must be eliminated before it comes here. So sometimes we, maybe we speak in hidden codes. Such that you miss the point, but well, there's nothing we can do for the protection. This of is the, the South Africa guys. that mm. we live in. This is the world that we live in. We have to, mm -hmm. unfortunately, one day you'll get it. Maybe after you watch it three times, sometimes you're like, Oh, this is what they meant. Yes, yeah, yes, you can't be name dropping names, okay? The names are expensive. People like us who visit hostel. Mm -hmm. Eish. Eish. I'm even afraid of visiting hostel. Don't, don't go to the hostel anymore. No. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Do not go to the hostel anymore. Queen Gui announcing Mr. Anonymous won't be your right, uh, how are gonna function, uh, guys. Oh. Let's please like the video, share the video. I think because I was waiting for this uh, uh, recording, someone was recording something and then he removed it. So I get, I'm done on my side, I'm done. I tried. Oh, Samuel Hadebe, yes, she was talking about Warren Officer Makubo's. I, th I hope you caught it when I explained it. I know people were asking me to explain what she was saying. It's with regards to Warren Officer Makubo's docket that perhaps all this information on accused number five was extracted from there. It's an allegation. It's alleged. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, just uh, name a few people. Chuku, Anna, thank you for being with us, Ned. Thank you for being with us. And Wandile, thank you, Sizum Gaka. Uh, going up to Samuel Radeb, thank you. Uh, Pel Kumalo, thank you. Tozi Slang, thank you. Moderator. Edgar Dean K. Yes, Edgar. Uh, thank you. Uh, Moodley, thank you. Govind Sami Moodley. Yes, and Tantaye too. 
thank you. Um, let's see. You okay. get some. Broly mtrobole. Yeah. Mtrobole. Right? Siabulela mzize. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Mzize, yes, I got it correct. Mami, thank you. Thank you, Mami. And uh, we have... Um, I think most people are repetitive here. Sfisos. Did he talk? Did he talk? Yes. Sfisos Sindane, BBM. Uh, trustee. And I think that's a owner of a voice. Um, yeah. Jeremiah. Oh, sorry for name dropping. My apologies, but it's hurting. We understand. Excuse. I'm sorry. But do Jeremiah. Right here we, we names protect them. Thank you. For now. Hold on to them. Ignatia. Thank you. Togo Masondo. Thank you. Spelele Kuma. Thank you. Uh, locomotives. Eh? Locomotives. Yes, oh, locomotives. Yeah, I read it in a Scandinavian way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's Scandinavian. Hey, locomotives. Uh, thank you. Okay, I've mentioned you. Spepelo. Um, I've mentioned you. Yeah, basically. The informative channel. The informative channel, yes. Mrs. You always K. Hear. Ignatia Hermanus. Zaman Kwabe. Yeah, those are people. Tempu, Siangoba, Mbogazi. Yeah, Boto, Obi, Ramokati, Obutu, Ramokati. Obi, thank you. Yeah, I think you guys, I got you. If I missed you, but thank you very much for being with us and like the video, uh, share the video. It's a bye from us. Hey, it's a bye. It's been a long week. You guys will see you next time. I'm not sure when. Maybe Monday.